Hello, everyone. This is an extremely exciting announcement that we are making for IBM Storage. And the question has to be asked, Ian, why do you think cyber resilience is relevant for this flash announcement? That's a great question, Andy. And uh, I may talk about that um, every now and then at the moment, or, or more to the point, I think almost daily. I think fundamentally, it is very clear, it is still very top of mind. Um, it, you know, it, the, in this particular survey, you can kind of see cybersecurity came out on top. And actually, when one of the um, analysts was take, or sorry, industry independence was taking us through their report, I actually asked on some of the questions they had, why is cyber not coming out top? And they said, on some of the questions, we have to not put cyber as an option or it would come out on top for every single question. So I think it just shows how top of mind it really is. And, and that's no surprise, right? With three quarters of organizations now having experienced an attack, I mean, it's just, it's such a prominent issue that everyone needs to resolve. In fact, if you really think about it, if organizations don't work out how to resolve this cyber resilience challenge, there is no generative AI option for them. They're all thinking about generative AI. How do you do that if your data is open to being manipulated or deleted? So it, it's kind of a, a very, very real problem for people. Um, and then these last two, obviously, you know, such high data loss after an attack. Um, the statistic actually for this one was only one in seven customers was able to fully recover all of their data after an attack. But I think for almost any organization, this last one is the one that will, you know, to me is the, the reason why they need to do something different. 89% took more than one day to resume normal business operations. And for what, nearly two thirds of them, that was more than four days. Now, Andy, you and I have been around this industry a little while. So, and, and I can't remember the last time I spoke to an organization that if you said to them, if you have an outage, I'll get you back in four days, that they would go, yes, that would be fine. <laughs> it, Ian, as a matter of fact, if we were to say, you're going to have an outage and be out for five minutes, they would be <laughs> concerned, would they? All right. Exactly, exactly. Yes, so uh, yeah, clearly something different needs to happen. There's just a very different threat. And, and that really leads into this, Ian. Why is discovering the threats fast or discovering them quickly? Why is that so important? Um, and I think, Andy, that kind of leads to a discussion I know you and I had and we, and we have with sort of the other members of our development team or performance team. You know, we looked at this sort of graph and just went, hypothetically, if someone's data was under an attack. And we were doing this based on, this could be whether they're encrypting the data, corrupting the data, deleting the data. How quickly could they cause damage? And obviously, you know, the team did the calculation and worked out in 24 hours, it would be possible for two and a half petabytes worth of data to be impacted. Now, that's assuming nothing else was happening. So I know, Andy, because uh, I know you're a perfectionist with these things, you kind of said, yeah, and it's probably not really going to be like this. It's probably maybe 30%. But of course, this was a calculation based off just one array. The point is that the enormity of the problem is is absolutely there. Uh, if, they, if, they, if they don't find the problem, by the time they do, far too much data will be, will be damaged. Yeah, I mean, and I, losing terabytes is serious, Ian, right? Losing terabytes is very yeah. serious. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, my, I mean, it's not so long ago we were barely thinking about petabytes. Now you could be losing that amount of data. So, <laughs> so I think that leads, Andy, really nicely on to, so we should probably get into what is it that IBM is doing to address this problem. And And I'm really excited about that, Ian, as I know you are, because we've been able to do something with our Flash Core module technology that is very unique. And the FCM4 in particular has the capability of detecting statistics, of keeping track of statistics on a per IOP basis. And, and that is really critical to be able to detect something's going wrong. I need to be able to see every IOP and I need to be able to do things like calculate the entropy. I need to be able to see how the compression has changed. I need to be able to collect statistics on 
what is the percentage of reads and writes and what's the blockchain uh, block size and how all those things are changing. Yeah. So if, if you uh, show the next slide, uh, Ian. The beauty of the FCM is that it fits into this entire architecture that you can see here that has the flash system. And we can think of this as the new 5300 with the spec V running, spectrum virtualized running on a 5300. The FCMs then are keeping track of all of these statistics, including entropy. Entropy is a measure of the randomness of the data. Also, FCM calculates the compression. And so as data comes in, the FCM knows what the compressibility was, and it can determine how the compressibility has changed. Now, it's not just that, Ian. It's important to know the entropy and such, but there's a lot of different ransomware attacks. So there's a lot of statistics that we can keep. And so what you see in this diagram here at the bottom is that in the FCM4, is uh, we have running on a processor, something we call the summarizer. And our research team helped us write this. And what the summarizer is doing is taking all of those statistics gathered on every IOP and putting them into a statistical format that summarizes what happened in the last two seconds, all right? And it does this for every volume that is uh, that that the the client has that is in this system, and so you can imagine that's a lot of data, and the summarizer then every two seconds passes this data up to the aggregator, which is running in the flash system. Again, think of it running in the fifty three hundred, and it's collecting all of this data on every volume. And then every two seconds, it passes that to the inference engine, what I call the revealer in, all right? It, it reveals the deepest, darkest secrets, all right? And, and what it's using is AI. It's using artificial intelligence that we, we have, uh, our research team has trained a model, an inference engine that, that's running real time, and it's been trained for many different use cases, and we've injected real ransomware, we've injected uh, simulated ransomware, and we've done it with a bunch of different use cases, a bunch of different workloads, and collected this and then trained this model. And this will be running on every flash system that has the, uh, the, the, the uh, new release on 5300, along with the FCM fours. And then if it if if we detect that a ransomware um, intrusion has occurred, we then raise an alert to storage insights. And storage insights then will uh, alert the customer and and that is critical. And so this is, what we are announcing specifically for the 5300, Ian. Yeah, and, and I guess, Andy, that some of those pieces you were just going through there, like the revealer and, and, and your aggregator and things, those things that we've got built in at that level, but also the technologies you built straight into the uh, FCMs itself, I assume is why no one else is going to be able to do this type of detection, right? That's right, because doing things like entropy and calculating the delta of compression consume a lot of CPU resources if you do it in software. In fact, so much so that you would need many cores. The beauty of doing it in the FCM, we can do it in parallel in the FPGA, Ian. And what do you think the performance impact is, Ian, when we're running this? Try zero, right? No performance impact whatsoever. And no one else can claim that. No one else can do it, Ian, because they don't have that computational storage device in the flash core module. Now, to be clear, the flash core module is not what's doing the AI, but you cannot do AI without data, can you, Ian? You can't. You can't <laughs> Absolutely. <not. laughs> 
<laughs> and so the FCM is collecting the data that is then passed to the model and the model uses this data and it's every two seconds. And um, Ian, I think you like to talk about this. Um, we can detect in less than a minute. In, in fact, it can be as low as 46 seconds, right? That we can detect. And in some cases, even less than that. And having it that quickly is extremely Im important. And it's very interesting for me, Andy, that you mentioned the 26 seconds there, because I remember when you first told me it was under the strict instructions I didn't tell anybody. But in all fairness, I, I, I now tell the story to everybody that, yes, this IBM fellow told me I'm not allowed to tell anyone, which tells me it's a great <laughs> data point. So I'm now going to tell you. But you've revealed it. So that's that's fantastic. <laughs> Well, why not let the world know what we have done, right? And, exactly. And, well, and, and how great we are, let's be honest. So. Yeah. yeah. And, and and so, Ian, I think um, it's important then that we talk about why is it that immutable copies of data critical for normal business operations, why is that important? We have this detection we talked about, but why are immutable copies uh, so important? Yeah, and well, and we we all, we often talk about these kind of steps to resilience, and we'll come back to this a little bit in a moment as well. But you know, clearly having secure, immutable copies of data is the way which in which businesses are going to be able to recover. You have to know you've got a copy of data there that nobody can change, nobody can delete. It it is the fallback plan. Um, and I know a lot of people will probably be thinking, well, isn't the backup the fallback plan? And it probably is for a lot of things. But as we've talked about, when you don't want, you know, outages and certainly you don't want prolonged outages, you certainly don't want them to be a day or four days or, or weeks, as it has been for, for some organizations. Having a secure, immutable copy on the storage array itself provides the ability to recover that storage volume in seconds. If you can recover that storage volume in seconds, you might have a chance of recovering your business in kind of minutes and or you know or maybe even small number of hours depending on on obviously the the other sort of influences that are, that have happened from the attack but that's why i think it is is so incredibly important and ian it's interesting you and i have focused so far on the real need right that there yeah. are unfortunately these villains in the world that are out to make money at the expense of others but governments and civil authorities also are concerned about this. So regulations are coming um, around as well. You want to speak to why uh, having immutable copies of data and all of what we're talking about here is, is critical um, in light of these operational resilience regulations that are coming around? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I'll sort of fill out the rest of these steps because it's the combination of all of these things when we think about the regulations. So for a start... They have to know they've got a copy of data that they can come back from. They have to be able to prove that they can actually recover, um, you know, probably in depending on uh, which organization, depending where they are in the world. Uh, you know, it could be, for example, two hours. They have to be able to prove they can recover in two hours. And that's where this last piece of the automation and testing is so important, because it it's not you have to show in theory. You have to, you know, show what have I done? and then prove it, and then document the, the testing that has been done, et cetera. So all of these steps become so incredibly important. And I think as we've kind of alluded to, the discovery is, is a real key element in here because it's potentially easy, if you like, to kind of talk about, okay, how can I come back? But what if you could find the threat, that, like we were talking about earlier, if we could find instead of that two and a half petabytes, if we could find it when it was two terabytes, clearly that's gonna lead to faster recovery because and, and, you're, and you're going to probably try and disagree with me here, Andy, because if I tell you something's impossible, I know you're going to try and create it. <laughs> but, but I don't think there is any technology out there that is going to recover two and a half petabytes faster than we can recover two terabytes. So you want to keep that blast radius impact as small as possible. And you do that by finding it faster. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, Ian, as you and I talk to clients, sometimes they bring up the op, the uh, the the resilience regulations even first, right? Because yep. they have to comply, right? Yeah. Oh, it, it's very top of mind, obviously, particularly in Europe right now, because they, those regulations are coming into effect at the beginning of next year. 
We've heard from many organizations their their audit slot has already been booked for early part of next year so that to, for them to prove that they are complying. But we're seeing around the globe now, we know, you know, other areas in the world where they are in the process of trying to put their own sets of regulations together. It's going to have to become regulated. The potential impact to uh, any geography's economy is just too great. It is. It is. And, and Ian, this is great technology that we have. And what's beautiful is that this is a real important aspect to IBM and to IBM storage. And yeah. so could you talk a little bit about how this kind of fits into what we call Defender and how it fits into our cyber resilience uh, story for IBM storage in particular? I mean, absolutely. I think there's um, kind of a couple of areas where it kind of fits in. I'm going to just fill this right out. So um, Defender kind of has two aspects to it. That one, one element, of course, is the automation it can bring to help with managing the copies. So if you kind of think about these two examples of what does good look like, you know, at the top here, if we even assume it's a storage flash system 5300 given given this announcement we can detect you know the threats quickly we can do those secure copies that we were just talking about um but it's really important to have all of that automated as we just kind of spoke to in that kind of fifth step and defender can help with delivering that automation the scheduling of the copies the scheduling of scanning copies if they want to do that as well and obviously the recovery piece but then there's also a secondary element of course which is for those workloads where maybe it doesn't need to be back in minutes, maybe a day, maybe two days, if it's archived data, maybe a week or two weeks would be okay. They still need a robust, you know, backup solution that you know is going to be there, isn't going to be corrupted. We, you know, we know it's a primary attack vector these days for these cyber attackers. And of course, we've got a very comprehensive solution there that not only can ensure that it is secure, actually in itself can help recover you know vms in you know minutes to hours for example you know i think it's something like 2000 vms we can recover it in um, in about 45 minutes for example so we have a great set of capabilities and obviously we're making sure through defender that we're going to make this from an end-to-end -end perspective it's integration in with security tools um really seamless and simple yeah ian i've told you this story before but what really got me started on thinking about what we could do here in terms of cyber resilience detection, in addition to the immutable copies and such, was a conversation I had with a healthcare software provider who I asked them, have you guys seen any ransomware attacks in your customers? They, they, they provide software to hospitals. Yeah. They said, oh, yes, Andy, two or three a month. That kind of yeah. took me aback. Then they said, Patients have died. Ian, yeah. what we're doing is not just good for IBM. It's not just good for our clients. It is good for society. It is so critical what we talked about here. And I'm so proud of, of what we have announced here and that it fits in so well with the 5300 and that I really think it gives our clients the capability not just to meet regulations, but to help them defeat these uh, these attackers, so I, I I completely agree, Andy. I completely agree, and and I think it probably brings us sort of neatly to maybe just sort of quickly summarising at the end here. I think for those that have been listening, you know, for those customers listening, not sure maybe what to do next after sort of hearing some of these things. If you really don't know where to start, we would strongly encourage you to take our secure and resilient assessment. It also takes into account some uh, regulations so we can help you with that piece. It can help you find those blind spots. You know, if you are looking for a storage system right now, um, then please come and talk to us about these capabilities. Uh, and I use this example from a, a, a customer of ours very recently who after hearing our sets of capabilities literally just said, why wouldn't I want that? Why wouldn't I want to discover those threats in seconds why wouldn't I want a system where I know I've got a copy I can come back from? Um, and I'll see then this last piece. And if you're looking to modernize your backup, if you're looking to go for a backup solution that you know is secure, because uh, there are many out there that unfortunately are not, then again, you know, please give us a, give your IBM business partner or your representative uh, a call. Uh, 
and we can help you find the right answer to the problem. Ian, it's always fun uh, uh, presenting with you and, and hopefully our customers on this uh, very exciting day where so much is being announced, we'll see how the cyber resilience is, is just instrumental and key to all of this that we're doing. Completely agree, Andy, and, and always a pleasure, always a pleasure talking with you. All right. Thanks, everyone.